Hello! New printed circuit boards from JLC PCB. Let's see what they are. It's so exciting! And this is another of my power distribution printed circuit boards. And this is an XT60 distribution board with six positions for XT60s and they're just simply put in parallel. Let's open the bag. Right. Now I used the footprint from JLC PCB's footprint library for this one. Um, I did feel that these holes were actually quite large. I think I'd have gone for something a bit smaller, but let's get some XT60s and see how they fit. Right, let's try some of these. Uh, oh, now those are females, I suppose. But those are the ones you tend to get on lipos so that's the one you use for source current and then pins you tend to use where are pins there for the receptacle the thing receiving the current okay let's see how they fit that's the pointy end which is negative on xt60s um yeah that is quite quite loose i think i'd have gone for a smaller hole than that i mean i could have done this pcb where I just simply placed pads and then assigned them to the two nets because the bottom layer net, the ground plane is, I don't know, zero volts. The top uh, ground plane net I called plus 12 volts, I think. But uh, yeah, so, but, I mean, these will work and I'm sure I can solder those in. But uh, yeah, they are a little bit loose. So, okay, let me get my soldering iron and put some of these in. Actually, I'll get the wires that I've made up, or I've made two. I think I need to make another couple and just show how this is going to work. So a while ago, I bought a, a set of 10 of these. These are PCIe splitters. Uh, so it takes a six pin PCIe and into each one of those pins, there are two wires and that takes it out to two six pin PCIEs with the option of um, an additional two pins which are just zero volt lines. Four graphics cards, these, but they also work on my ant miners. So what I've done is I've started to make up some of these which are XT60 to dual PCIE. Essentially these are six pin because um, I don't use the additional two grounds. So given that these are males, most of the connectors on this board I want will be females, but then what I'm probably going to do is put one male on the rear side, like ooh, that. No, it won't be. It'll be like that. Get my posies and neggies the right way around. Now I really should solder that one in first and then solder these uh, females as I go outwards. Yes, I'll probably do that. Okay, so let's start by soldering that one in. Right, that's soldered that and I've managed to get solder to flow around this side. It's more difficult getting in between the two pins. Where's my focal point? There it is. Um, so I've kind of left that, but I think it's flowed into that gap. So that's the male on, that's the incoming, and now I need to get some females on. Where is my focal point? It seems to be up here, I don't know why. There's nothing up here. Uh, so I'll start putting some of those females on. And that's it with three output connectors, one input connector. Now certainly this board isn't going to be handling 60 amps, but it might be handling about 25 and of course, all that current is going to go through the input connector and then proportions of that will come out of those output connectors. And I can put two more on here as and when I need to. But I've got these two wires already made up. So I think what I'll do is plug these onto this board and actually take it out to the shed and try it on the SCAM system. So here is the SCAM system in the shed. Uh, SCAM is an acronym, of course. It's not. It's nothing to do with scams. It's the Solar Crypto Accumulation Machine. So we've got the big battery pack here. It's uh, eight cell lithium ion phosphate. 
So nominally, oh, what is it? 25.6 volts, something like that. Uh, solar comes in here through three car headlight bulbs in parallel into this distribution board, which was my XT90 distribution board. Now that was done slightly differently. I put ring terminals on the XT90 connectors and had them coming in from the side. That of course goes to the battery. There's a BMS, there's a fuse here, but it also goes to this device, which is a voltage um, monitor device. So currently you can see the battery pack is at 26.6 volts. Now when that gets to 28 volts, constantly charged by solar, and there is some today, it's not wonderful. Oh, I'll have to just pick that up. Um, but there's one and a half amps going into the battery pack. So yeah, it is being charged. So this gets up to 28 volts, the relay turns on, that goes into that XT90, into the buck converter, which takes the batteries 28 volts, as it will be when that relay turns on, down to 12 volts, and then that goes into that. XT90 and then it's a bit of a mess. You've got this funny connector board um, coming off to four of these uh, PCIe connectors and it's that that I intend to replace with my new PCB. So this is where I need to uh, disconnect this. So that's the XT60 that's going to go into my new board. Um, this is a circuit board which has a connector that goes into the Hewlett Packard power supplies and then I've soldered in these PCIe connectors so I'm going to disconnect all of those from the ant miner and then try and put my new board in place. So I'll start by plugging uh, these four PCIe's into the four boards. Now three of them are hashing boards and the fourth one is a controller board but they all take 12 volts. So let's do that. Um, so that's the controller board. Plug that in. And the three hashing boards. I think that has to go that way around. And then another one here. And another one this way around. These um, little double earthing additional connectors are a little bit of a nuisance but not too bad and then that kind of will hover over the top there and then I plug in this plug into there oh let's just make sure I've got my posies and neggies the right way around that does look right doesn't it pause at the top there neg at the bottom and these posies are at the top so I think that's right and then that can just sit on there I might need to just have something to hold that up but otherwise I think that looks pretty good and then I can switch on this ant miner and see if uh, the board hangs together with 25 or so amps going through it. So I've just cut this piece of uh, foam rubber from some pipe insulation and I'll just put that under the board so that it's uh, not likely to, I'm not sure whether all this stuff is earthed or at least uh, referenced to the zero volts on these incoming connectors but just in case it is, I don't want that dropping down onto the metalwork. Right, now I believe that you can override this um, voltage controlled switch by just pressing the button. So let's do that. On. That hasn't turned on. Why is that? Yeah, I think this on off thing is just the functionality being on or off. I think to switch this on, I'm going to have to actually lower the trigger threshold to below this 26.7. So let's press and hold that. Uh, so the upper threshold I'll bring down to 26.5 and then press and hold. And on it goes. Relay is on, red light is on. This board is powered up. Now this ant miner at the moment is only running the fan. So I'll wait until it's booted up and then it will run the hashing boards as well. And that's when it will draw the full well, it's about 270 watts, but at 300 watts, 12 volts, that's about 25 amps. So that's it, finished with its boot up phase. Oh, my um, lights are on, I'll disconnect that. We don't need the flashing LEDs on. 
Um, yes, that all seems to be working. What I really need is an ammeter to see how much current is going through these wires. And with that current going through the board, just want to uh, make sure everything's cold. Uh, well, I can feel a tiny bit of warmth. Yeah, maybe that is a few degrees up from sort of the baseline temperature in here, which I suppose you'd expect at 25 amps, but it seems to be holding its own just fine. Right, so this is DC 40 amps. I think, well DC if I use the clamp connector. So let's put that over one of these wires, doesn't really matter which one. And yeah, 20 amps going through there. Yeah, that's about right because I think this is taking about 270 watts, 12 volts. So anyway, 20 amps is what this thing records. Let's take the other connector away. Yeah, this is there is some warmth in this. It's not what I'd call alarmingly hot, but it is mildly warm to the touch. But then I suppose you'd expect that uh, on a one ounce copper PC B with 20 amps going through it. But it seems to be hanging in there perfectly well. Now, the reason I made this PCB um, with its five possible outputs and one input is because although this ant miner only requires four of these PCIe uh, connectors, three for the hashing boards and one for the controller board. The machine I actually want to use is this one and this has double connectors for each of these four hashing boards so that's eight connectors there plus a ninth one for the controller board. So with five output connectors on this PCB and these split cables that will give me up to 10 connectors which I can plug into the bigger machines uh, down here this is the L3 plus because I'm hoping that this will produce more cryptocurrency for the same amount of electricity and uh, therefore I want to substitute the machine on the bench for this one down here and see if that's the case so now I need to put two more of these uh, female connectors on the board and then make up uh, three more of these uh, XT60 to dual PCIe connecting cables. So I shall go and do that. So there's my board fully populated with XT60 females, five of them on this side and the XT60 male here. Now I've just remade the solder connections uh, for the male because that's the one that takes the full current. So I've made sure that the solder has run right round the uh, through plated hole on both the pos and the neg. These ones it's not quite so important because each are taking a smaller proportion of the current. So there are little gaps around inside here but I'm not too concerned about that. Um, now I want to make up more of these which are XT60 males to these split PCIEs. So that's going to take a while. Um, I'll probably come back for another video on those. This was the main focus of this video and yes it can handle 20 amps with possibly a small temperature rise. But yeah that seems pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So Cheerio.